Howdy dogs, welcome to your third CSS animations tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about transitions. <laughs> Alright then gang, so what the hell is a transition? Well, basically they're like the most simple way to do some kind of animation on a page. But they're not technically part of the whole CSS animation camp, right? What they do basically is they transition an element from one state to another. All right, in a certain way over a set amount of time. So for example, say we have this cloud, right? Say this is way over here on the left. And what we wanna do is make it look like a windy day. So we want that cloud to go from the left to the right over a set amount of time. We want it to kind of drift to the right, yeah? Well, what we can do is we can use a CSS transition to go from the first state to the second state and we can set the options about how we want that transition to occur, such as how long we want it to occur, to take, timing functions, the delay, etc. Okay, so that's what transitions are all about, going from one state to another and how the element transitions between the two. Now, I'm not gonna go through that example in this tutorial. I wanna do something a little more practical. So what I've done is create this dude right over here. It's just a div with a class of circle and it says hover me, right? So this is just gonna be an element on a web page. this thing here could be a button or something like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some transition effects when we hover over this button. So if you look in the CSS, what I've done is just create some basic styles at the minute, give it a width of 100, some padding, line height of zero. All this is just to make it into a perfect circle. Uh, then give it a bit of margin. A background color is gonna be pink to begin with. This is what we're gonna transition to begin with. Uh, the text is white border radius of 50 pixels to give it that circular effect and then the cursor is pointer. So the first thing I wanna do is just give this a hover state, right? So let's say circle, hover, and then we're gonna just change the background color. So we'll change it from pink to salmon. All right, so now if I save, you'll notice it just kind of flicks to that salmon color when we hover over. So this is the first state where it's just pink and this is the second state of the element right, where it's salmon. Now, what we wanna do is make a transition so that this is a little more subtle and it kind of blends from one color into the other. So that's when we'd use a CSS transition. So all we need to do is come to the element we want to apply the transition to, which is this thing right here, yeah, the circle element. And we say transition, that's the property name, and then we pass through some options on how we want this transition to occur. So to begin with, I'm just gonna pass through one option, which is the time. So I'm saying right here, I want this to take one second. And whatever we change from state one, which is this, to state two, which is the hover state, then I want that to transition over one second, right? Not straight away, as was the case before this, when it just kind of flicked from one color to the other, but I want it to take one second. So now when I hover, you'll see it gradually fade in and out. A little more subtle, yeah? Cool. So this is gonna affect everything we change on this element. For example, if I say transform, and then what we wanna do is rotate it, and we wanna rotate it 360 degrees. So it's gonna do a full turn, right? It's gonna spin around once. Now this transition here, this one second, is gonna to apply to every thing that we change. So it's gonna to apply to this, and it's gonna to apply to this. So it's gonna rotate 360 degrees over the course of one second as well. And I can demonstrate that like so. Okay, pretty cool. Now, what if we want a different kind of transition time for this one than we do for this? Well, we can do that. We can specify what effect we want this one second to you know, transition over. So right now we want this one second to apply to the background, like so. Now, if I hover over this, you'll notice you don't get that spin effect because it's happening automatically. And since it's doing the full sweep around 360 degrees, it looks like it's not changing. And that's because we've only applied now this transition to the background property. If we wanna also apply transition to this, we can do, we can just chain it on the end. And we can say now we want to transition the transform effect and we want that to take 0.3 seconds. So that's much quicker. Now, if I hover over, you're gonna see that circular motion much quicker than the fading in and out of the background. 
So now we've got two separate transitions controlling two different things. So if you want the transition to control every different property that changes, you don't need to supply these keywords on what you want to change. You just say something like one second like that, and that's going to control everything. Otherwise, you have to specify which properties you want to control and you know give them different options if you like. So, so far, we've said we want the background and the transform to be transitioned over these times. We can also pass through other parameters if we like. Uh, we can pass through a delay. So I could say on this one, I want a one second delay. So always the first number you supply is the transition time and the second number you supply is the delay, right? So what I'm saying here is this one is gonna fire first because it's gonna take one second. This has got a one second delay. So it's essentially gonna wait for this to finish and then go around in 0.3 seconds. So the whole thing is gonna take 1.3 seconds, right? So we can see that, there we go, like so. Okay, so there are three parameters we can pass through to the transition property. I'm going to show you one more, and uh, that is the timing function. So we could say something like linear. This is how the transition kind of goes. So linear means it never speeds up and it never slows down. And if I go over this now, you'll notice that the, uh, the twirl effect just is a kind of constant rate. In fact, what I'm going to do is just change this to one second also. So you can see clearer. And you'll see it's a steady rate all the way around, okay? Never speeds up, never slows down. But if I change this to ease in, then what that's gonna do is start off slower and gradually speed up. So now if I hover over, starts off slower, then speeds up, okay? Starts off slow, then speeds up. So there's a few different timing functions we can use. We can use ease in, um, we can use ease out, or just ease and they're all going to do different things so you can have a play around with those see what they do so if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to ask those down below otherwise guys i'm going to see you in the very next tutorial